greetings and welcome to an LGR thing. A rather special topic today. Today we're going to be discovering how to find anything on the internet. At least according to this CD-ROM from the year 2000. From Career Track, communicate with the world. Quick and easy, access to unlimited information, and so on. We're apparently going to learn how to use a web browser, navigate the web, find what you want. I really don't know what we're going to discover on this disc, because I have not tried it yet. I found it in an episode of LGR Thrifts at a local Goodwill store, and well, anything like this, I am instantly intrigued by. Not only does it look ridiculously low budget, I, I don't know if this was even sold or if it was just like handed out or what. Like there's no UPC. Maybe it was part of a larger product of some kind or offered through their website or who knows what. But uh, yeah, it's got little F and B sequences it looks like. And I, I'm down. I don't even know if this booklet has anything in there. I haven't looked at it yet. Oh, well, <laughs> instructions on installation. Insert the CD into the drive. It'll automatically boot. Yeah, I don't anticipate this will be too anything, uh, anything too complicated, considering I saw the Macromedia uh, thingy right there on the back. So this is probably Macromedia Director. Yeah, right there. Pond View Productions. Yeah, okay, enough rambling. Let's dive into how to find anything on the internet in the year 2000 on Windows 98. Okay, well, I am ready to find out how to find anything on the internet. Welcome to Career Track. How to find anything on the internet. Let's install it. Now, that wasn't much. I'm assuming it's all pretty much going to be loading right off of the CD. Because there were some QuickTime things there, so it's probably just a bunch of move files if I had to guess. All right. Nice little interface here. Well, yeah, <laughs> nice for the, uh, for, for the time. Just curious about those files, though. Oh, it's a bunch of AV files. Pretty much just QuickTime and Macromedia Director. All right, let's uh, get started. Welcome to Prior Resources, How to Find Anything on the Internet. I'm Terry Parker Brown. Hi, Terry. I'll show you how to get the most out of the internet. With information, entertainment, products, and services that are easily available at any time, the internet is continually becoming more a part of the way we live and the way we do business. In this course, you'll see what the Internet has to offer. As you learn how to use a web browser to view web pages. Oh, is that what you do with a web browser? And we'll be working with the most commonly used web browsers, Microsoft Internet Explorer, Netscape Navigator, and the America Online Browser. <laughs> I mean, that sums up the year 2000 pretty well. All right, so uh, she just sort of faded into the earth there. Mm, sort of a ghostly apparition left over. And it looks like we're uh, left with whatever else the rest of this is. So we've got a text transcript. We can print things out. Oh, I don't have a printer installed. <laughs> and there's an index. Oh man, look at all the topics. Wow, a lot of topics. Hmm, frames. So yeah, it's really, I guess, just a bunch of videos. That's Once uh, you know hmm. Well, let's just look around at a few more of these because I mean, why not? Yeah, there might be some fascinating stuff in here and at least the videos are pretty decent quality. Before you get started with this course, we'll take a moment to show you how to use it. The screen is divided into uh, three beer. areas. I, I, I figured it out. It's basically a glorified QuickTime player. It's okay. It's okay, Terry. I understand. We've got an interface within an interface here. I, I've gotten the interface. The web lets you view and interact with pages that... <laughs> oh, classic New York Times website. Yeah, man. You can see a lot of this stuff still on archive.org, but like, you know, ads and a lot of the images aren't on there. They didn't get backed up or, you know, they're just hard to reach sometimes because some, yeah, I don't know, archiving is a thing. But uh, yeah, it's nice. It's, look at that. I mean, that's really, really clear imagery here. These are well-made videos, I'm going to say. Our computer is already online. What is this desktop? <laughs> it's... What is all this? Like, some of these are default icons they just left, but the recycle bin is full. This quick start menu is just is going off to the wherever, and look at this. You task manager, got some display options. What is this, some sort of sound thing? I don't know. It, it just strikes me as odd that, like, a t tutorial here would go with a computer that has some stuff that is very obviously, like, geared towards their specific PC. Like, why wouldn't they just turn off these icons and make it as clear as possible? But anyway, whatever. Oh my, let me just pause it right here. Look at these. 
these headlines, Alaska airplane turned upside down. Yeah, the black box. Euro comforted after ECB raises rates. Below that is the menu bar. We click a menu heading to open that menu. All right, well, that's, that, this is computer stuff. Good things to learn. To get back to the previous page using the keyboard, we hold the Alt key and press the right arrow key. Wait, really? Alt left arrow would move us forward. <laughs> what the heck? I just learned something. Alt left and right will take you back and forward through web pages. I, uh, <laughs> I've never done that. <laughs> well, look at me, the caveman pressing the back and forward buttons. When you start typing an address that matches one of these, the browser completes the address for you. Mmm. Autocomplete. The bane of many a challenging relationship. <laughs> well, I swear, I, I've never been to that site before. All right, well, we've, we've graduated the getting started lessons. Let's move on to getting around. Once you know how to get to web pages using addresses and hyperlinks, you can start exploring the web. This time we'll work with a Ooh, ooh, classic AOL. Oh, dude, dude, I just gotta, I gotta, I gotta stop right there. Look at, oh, look at the username too, TerryPB2000. <laughs> That's the, it's just, 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 just perfect little slice of time right here. Oh man, year 2000 AOL, holy crap. This is great. And I like how this is all like apparently captured on the same day as February 3rd, 2000. Uh, but anyway, old AOL. Sorry, I just get a little, I get a little wistful, misty-eyed seeing this. Similar to Netscape Navigator, but AOL is different in that it's an online service that includes a browser for viewing content from both AOL and from the internet. Dang right it's different. That's what made AOL so friggin' neat. You know, keywords, man, and little, they had dedicated things and pages and stuff to go to only within AOL, the channels. Yeah, that's what they were called. And this time, the browser we'll use is Microsoft Internet Explorer. Man, it's hopping around, man. Netscape, AOL, Internet Explorer. Oh, dude, dude, dude. There we go. Oh, yeah. Amazon.com. Top 100 CDs. Shop now and save. Look at that weak little Amazon link. It's just a, uh, you know, whatever. I also love how like, clickbait's exactly the same. Pilot's last words. 22 romantic gifts. Common interview goofs. Top 10 car features. Like... My God, we're in an endless loop of garbage. Yahoo is the type of site known as a portal because it gives you access to lots of other web locations and features. You know, I never really used Yahoo that much because by the time I got into really searching internet deeply, I had already figured out what Google was. And you know, I was 1998, so whatever. It was still like friggin' new. I mean, yeah, I think I used uh, Ask Jeeves and Alta Vista a little bit more than Yahoo for whatever reason. I don't know, I was more inclined to like type in stuff and just like, uh, Yahoo's lists of things were, you know, kind of useful or whatever, but I don't know, just never got super into the whole Yahoo thing. Oh, okay, let's see, let's pause here. What are what are these others? I just like looking at these different stories. Ah, Carolina Panthers running back, Fred Lane arrested. Yep, in the year 2000. Ah, Derek Jeter, the Yankees, $10 million deal. American Psycho loses NC-17 battle. I didn't know there was a battle for that. I love that movie. Click the My AOL button and select Preferences. Ooh, the Preferences. I always liked this Preferences menu with the little, with the, you know, the squares, the icons. Like, it looks so nice compared to, you know, the drab interface of Internet Explorer. Like, look at this. Would you rather have this or this? I know which one I would rather have in the year 2000. My favorites menu include this one called NetLingo which is a handy guide to internet terms and jargon. <laughs> internet terms and jargon. That would just be memes. <laughs> uh, you know, oh yeah, yeah, like emoticons and acronyms and lol. Oh, that old school Google, there we go. Add free web search to your site, and I did. My Angel Fire site had a little Google box. Odd to get, be like nostalgic about Google, but you know, the late 90s Google was a little different, or well, year 2000 in this case, whatever, same thing. A search engine searches the web for sites that contain a word or words that you're looking for. Man, that was just like a revolution when that happens. Like search engines, yeah, it's not just a bunch of stuff listed in a catalog like Yahoo. It's like, holy crap, you could find things by word, do Boolean searches and all that good stuff. Let's say you're in the binocular business specializing in binoculars for bird watching. <laughs> okay, uh, let's say that I am. To look through all these pages for references to bird watching or Seattle and Tacoma would be ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. 
holy crap, holy crap, the memories are coming back again for something else that's completely unrelated to what she's talking about. Call Wave, the internet answering machine. Yeah, it, you know, like you had dial up and you're on the internet or whatever and somebody's trying to call and somebody could like leave a message or whatever that way. I don't even remember how it worked, but I remember that and you'd like get a wave file and it's like, holy crap. There's somebody that's left a message for you while you're online. Like, it was super neat. Other features called Boolean operators. Now, here we go. Boolean and logical operators. I learned how to use these at the local library. All right, we, we figured out how to get around, and now let's get some value. Whatever that means. When you find useful information on the web, you often want to do more with it than just read it on the web page. You can print a web page or save it on your computer to refer to it later. It was definitely a thing, especially if you had limited hours or dial up or whatever. And it's like, yeah, I got to print this website out and take it to somebody and show it to them in person. Man, I did that a lot. Keep in mind that companies on the web often ask for personal information and they often make it available to other businesses as well. Sometimes this information is used to track your web usage. How crazy! Oh man, companies doing stuff with your information on the internet. What will ever come of that? When we use web page forms like this one. Oh man, forms. Like just such basic ones. Uh, I, I used to put these on my own website and they, they went nowhere. But I just liked having them on there because I thought that they were cool. Like the fact that you could input information to a website and it'd be like, Whoa. I don't know. It just felt like kind of weirdly magical in the late 90s. And uh, yeah, anyway. A type of file that we often download is called a plugin. Ooh, plugins are programs yeah. that add Let's features get into to some our plugins, browser. Baby. Shockwave allows us to get high quality graphics and interactive multimedia. And Real Player lets us run real time audio and video. Flash, Shockwave, and Real Player. It's like the holy trinity of early 2000s internet uh, like multimedia right there. <laughs> Many downloads are free. Yeah, yeah. Most all of them are free if you know where to look. Are they going to tell us how to do that? How to find anything on the internet? Ooh, watch out for viruses. Yeah, you know, stay away from Bonzi, buddy. Be careful where you get your virtual girls. What is this computer? We got a WeeBase K62. These specs aren't particularly great. Well, I, I mean, I guess it is an affordable home PC, 499. But yeah, 400 megahertz K62, 32 megs of RAM, 6.4 gig hard drive. That's what I had in 1997. When we see an item we're interested in, we can add it to our shopping cart, or we can click to get more information about it. Yeah, I guess I started doing online shopping in 99, no, 98, I guess. Because I think, I, you know, I signed up for eBay in 1999. I was doing Amazon stuff in 98. Just books, you know, it was just books at that point, but still. We'll go to the eBay site, which offers millions of items in a wide variety of categories. I honestly miss this version of eBay. Like, honestly, it was just so straightforward. I mean, it's still pretty darn straightforward and old school in a lot of ways, but you know, it gets gunked up with a bunch of garbage too. But like, look how simple this is. For some reason, I just prefer a way simpler interface, like very straightforward, just hyperlinks. Whoa, what the crap was she looking at? What is this? 10 CD-ROM software liquidation. These CD-ROMs sold for $9.99 each. You can get 10 for $100. <laughs> Okay, Game Works One, dude, I have this disc. Okay, well that's uh, that's it for getting value. I got lots of value from that. Let me tell you, favorite websites though. I'm super curious, Terry. What are your favorites? This course includes listings of some of our favorite websites, which you can view by clicking the websites button below. Oh my, here we go. Anywho, there's another one that I got. Wow, completely forgot about that. This was a little creepy at the time. For It was kind of bizarre to be able to like type in stuff and then get a bunch of information about someone or somewhere. And then, uh, yeah, like it was just, it, I, I, there was something about it being on the internet and accessible through such easy searches that for what, you know, it freaked out certain friends and family. They're like, I don't want to be on them internets. And you know, there you are. It's public information. Too bad. You can even do a reverse lookup if you know a phone number. Yeah, the reverse lookup especially. Typing in a phone number and then figuring out who it was. Because yeah, you get like crank calls or just weird calls. And if you had caller ID, you could look it up that way. And it's like, oh, it's that jerk. What the heck is this? Which punishment would you recommend for John Rocker to ensure he keeps his mouth shut? Sunflower Seed Diet Only, Tour Guide of Ellis Island, Bouncer, The Connection, what? Man, there must have been some drama there I missed. The internet is also a good source of government information at federal, state, and local levels. IRS.gov looked like a crappy tabloid. What is that design? 
Oh man, 1999 tax products on CD-ROM. Order now. Well, that was how to find anything on the internet. I gotta say, it sort of oversold its title. I guess we also still have the website listings that they were talking about. All these different websites. Hot jobs, monster, oh, finance things. Yeah, this is the basic, like most basic website list I think I've ever seen. Nothing really out of the ordinary. It's just like, oh, here we go. I mean, this is kind of fun though to look back at all the different search sites, homepages, and portals. Alta Vista, AOL, Anywho, Ask Jeeves, Dogpile, Excite, Google Info Seek, Lycos, Metacrawler, MSN, and Northern Light. I mean, man, a lot of stuff that it's been consolidated in just like a couple sites or they're just gone or irrelevant at this point. All right. Well, that was how to find anything on the internet. Uh, I'm not quite sure what I was expecting, but I mean, that wasn't too far off from it. I was hoping for a little bit more of like internet on a CD, like archived websites you could sort of interact with or something. I've seen some discs. In fact, I have a couple uh, that do that. That would be kind of interesting to go into at some point, maybe a little more interactive. This is pretty much just watching videos. And if you'd like to take a look at it yourself, I've supplied an archive of the disc over on archive.org. There is a link in the description below this video, so check it out if you'd like. And check out some of my other videos if you'd like. This was a bit of a simpler episode, but this era of computing is very much the kind of thing I'm into. So if you like this, you probably like other stuff I do. And as always, thank you very much for watching.